right? Okay. Plug us in. Legal difference in the United States law between alien and extraterrestrial. By law, an alien is a physical being from this physical universe who is not from this planet. An extraterrestrial can be a borderline physical or non-physical being who may not necessarily be from this universe. So, by law, U.S. law is illegal for a U.S. citizen to have contact with an extraterrestrial. It does not say you cannot have contact with any alien. The reason is alien contact can be monitored physically, extraterrestrial cannot. So it's illegal for you to communicate with them or contact. By interest on the same page of law, it's also illegal for U.S. citizens to have unsupervised contact with dolphins. You know, I don't take my glasses off for, for many uh, interviews, but I'll, I'll take them off for you. Oh, thank you. What's the biggest misconception about you? That I am uh, artificial and attention-seeking, when the truth is that every bit of me is uh, devoted to love and art. Let it begin. The Illuminati, who are basically the descendants of the hybridization program, have their own agenda, and their agenda is a bit different than the original reptilian agenda. I'll give you a brief description of, of shape-shifting. When a person has a split of 50-50 genetics, in other words, 50% reptilian, 50% human, that's the thing, is what would the genetics defer to? It goes by the mind pattern or the soul personality operating the body. So, for example, if you have a reptilian soul personality in such a body, the body would defer to reptilian genetics and manifest as a reptilian. If you needed to hide behind a human form and you needed to be in public as a human, but you had this reptilian body, the only way to maintain the human form is by ingesting human hormones, blood, organs, etc. that would then jump or boost the, the human genetics to manifest in that form instead. And that is why many of these Illuminati societies have these sacrificial rituals or sexual rituals where they bring up the human harmonics or energies so that they can maintain the human form. When they get very angry or they get very uh, intense, the eyes shift and they look like slits, you know, instead of the round pupils. And you can see that this happens sometimes on TV. You can, if you look at sometimes some of the government officials when they're speaking, and you have to ask yourself, and you look at all these skin conditions that these uh, leaders have, where suddenly they're going to the hospital, getting skin lesions removed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's when you shape shift frequently, the body then starts to lose the genetic memory of what shape am I. So very often when they go back to human form, there's a spot of two here or there that maintains reptilian form, and then they have to cover that up. Uh, but we know that there are seven different species within the Draco Empire or hierarchy. But if you know about reptilian culture and you know about the seven species and there's a hierarchy, they don't mix together, it would make very good sense that when you colonize an area, you have separate living quarters for each of the species. And so uh, the different species look like 
the very high or elite group are very tall, uh, white-skinned reptilians with blue eyes, and they sometimes have been known to have wings on the back. It's not exactly as scaly as you'd see on a crocodile or an alligator, but it's very rough uh, skin that looks as if it's segmented in places. The faces can look very human-like or humanoid. They have two eyes, and nose, and mouth, but the reptilian have that, uh, what I call cat eyes. They look like cat eyes, and they have a very uh, pronounced jaw and very pronounced teeth. Hello? Are you there? Hello?